Jalen McMillan is asserting himself as the wide receiver three early in training camp. That and more on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. You are Locked on Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome into this episode of Locked On Bucks, your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listener view every day. Don't forget you can subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, you can follow along on Twitter. I am James Yarko at JRCO underscore Bucks, credentialed member of the media covering your Tampa Bay Buccaneers as Deputy Editor of SB Nations, BucksNation.com, here with you every Monday through Friday, along with the everydayers. And for that, I want to share my appreciation for your continued support of the show. One of the ways you can support the show is become a Locked On Bucks insider. You're going to get news, rumors, updates, general thoughts, one-on-one conversations with me via text message. Go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Bucks or click the link in the show notes to become an insider today. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As the playoffs have wound down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Jamel Dean and Zion McCollum are turning some heads, while Kalisha Cancy believes there's no limit to what he and Vita Vea can accomplish together. That's coming up in a little bit. But let's start things off with the early rising star in training camp. And that, of course, is wide receiver Jalen McMillan. It seems safe to say that Jalen McMillan took an early lead in the wide receiver three competition, and there may be no looking back from here on out. He had one practice where he scored a head top touchdown over Zion McCollum, then followed that up with two more touchdowns in the same practice. And yes, we are talking about practice with no pads, But the early connection being formed between he and Baker Mayfield is worth taking note of. This was one of the big competitions that we said to keep an uh, an eye on. And there is a lot of eyes that are on Jalen McMillan less than a week in. When asked about McMillan, head coach Todd Bowles said, quote, he is still developing right now. We know he has outstanding hands and competitiveness. We know he can play all three spots. Obviously, you've got Trey Palmer and Raheem Jarrett and a lot of guys in there playing, but we're really high on him. He's very smart. He's very competitive. He has a motor that doesn't stop that's only going to help us. I think we're still unwrapping the things he can do to put in the offense to help us. When we get a good two or three weeks in, you will see more of that. Then Chris Godwin was asked about rookie wide receiver Jalen McMillan, and he said, quote, he has a really good feel for the game. You can tell that already with uh, the way that he moves. He's coming in and playing with confidence. He's doing a really good job of taking in the advice from the vets, from me and Mike Evans, from Shep, guys who have played a lot of ball. He's really taking in that advice and applying it. Definitely, like we saw, he has a long way to go, and that's what I was telling him today. But I really appreciate his enthusiasm for the game. He makes a big play, and he's celebrating, and we're trying to get more of that. It's not business as usual. If we score a touchdown, let's celebrate. This stuff is fun, you know. I think he's off to a really good start, but again, it's day two. We've got to put the pads on and progress to preseason games and then to the regular season, but he's off to a good start, and I think he's a great addition to our group, end quote. Of course, the quarterback, Baker Mayfield, had to chime in as well because he's the one that would be getting the ball to Jalen McMillan, and he said, quote, Quarterbacks and receivers, the more reps you get, the more you trust them. The more you see their body language coming in and out of cuts and understanding how they're moving around. He's going to make plays when the ball is in the air, and that's one thing I'm continuing to learn. Really just give him a chance. He might not be the biggest guy, but he's going to go up and high point the ball, and that's a natural skill that he has. My trust is going to continue to grow as long as he keeps doing the right things, and he is. I think he's got the right attitude. He brings a lot of juice to that room. I think him and Sterling are a couple of little mighty mouses running out there, screaming at people and talking trash. It brings energy, end quote. 
McMillan is starting to look and sound like a little bit of a spark plug for this receiver unit. Baker went on to talk about how Mike Evans and, and Godwin have been around for a long time, and sometimes it's hard for them to get pumped up about certain things, like scoring touchdowns in practice, whereas McMillan brings that spark, that energy. With that said, the biggest tests are yet to come. Full pads, full contact practice, facing a team in preseason where it's in their best interest to absolutely destroy you because those guys are trying to make a football team. We're talking about true live snaps. McMillan hasn't faced any of that in the NFL yet, but it is coming. The thing that Jalen McMillan needs to continue doing is maintaining what he's already done, but also building off of it. You don't want him to get a big head or be cocky and arrogant, but you do want him to be confident. It's kind of a toss up between receivers and corners as to who the most confident players in the NFL are, and they border on cocky and, and arrogant, but that's kind of what you want. What you don't want is that Antonio Brown, Terrell Owens level of arrogance to set in. But Jalen McMillan is off to a great start early, and he just needs to continue that growth of of building that confidence that these are things that he's able to do that he can do no matter if he's up against Jamel Dean or Zion McCollum or Christian Izian or Antoine Winfield Jr. or Jordan Whitehead. It shouldn't matter. He needs to understand that it doesn't matter who's on the other side of the field. He is the one that controls the outcome of that play when he's given that opportunity. You know, he can continue to pick Mike and, and Chris's brains and ask questions in the film room and sit down with the secondary and pick their brain about situations that he could face from their perspective. How can he win those battles? What is the what is the mindset of the corner or the safety in that situation? And how can he get ahead of it and make the play? Any and everything that he can do to improve his game. McMillan can be a huge difference maker in this offense and is already starting to earn the trust of Baker Mayfield. And that is a potentially huge change over what the Buccaneers had last year when Baker really didn't have a reliable or a consistent wide receiver three. It was a constant rotation of guys, David Moore, Trey Palmer, Devin Tompkins, Raheem Jarrett. You know, they were bouncing all over the place. Now, He's got McMillan, and he's got Sterling Shepard. And, of course, Shepard he already trusts from their time playing together. And, and you look to Jalen McMillan as the future. You know, he is the, the future of this wide receiver room and could be called on to fill Chris Godwin's role after this season. We hope not. But it is possible that this is the only season that Baker's going to have Mike and Chris and Jalen playing together. This first month, for McMillan is going to be vital in knowing whether or not he's going to be the guy they look to when the season kicks off against Washington as that reliable wide receiver three option, whether he's lining up on the outside, they're putting Chris Godwin in the slot, wherever they put him, he is going to be number 15 is going to be the one called on first over the likes of Trey Palmer or Raheem Jarrett or Sterling Shepard, but there's a long way to go. We're, we're still in the first week of training camp for the Buccaneers, and there's a lot of, of ways that McMillan has not been tested yet, so it's going to be vital for him to continue this growth, continue building that trust with Baker Mayfield and making plays out on the practice field. You know, something that, that has been said by probably every athlete and every coach to participate at any level is you you practice the way you play. And if you practice the way you play, then games are easier because you're already doing what you've been doing. You don't have to take it up three or four notches in order to, to meet the intensity of a game versus a practice. The starting corners have stepped up their game as well, especially first-year starter Zion McCollum. They had a big Sunday against Baker Mayfield. That is next on today's episode of Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I love sports. I love them so much, I never want them to stop. But with the playoffs being over with, we get fewer games, and the sports aren't sportsing like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open up the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. This summer, FanDuel is hooking up 
all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Right now, the Dodgers are the favorites to win the World Series of plus 320, while the Tampa Bay Rays are selling off players at the deadline and are sitting at plus 29,000. If you'd rather get in on some NFL odds early on, the Chiefs and the Niners are tied atop the Super Bowl odds at plus 600, while the Bucks have somehow dropped to plus 6,500 and are plus 310 to win the NFC South. Head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Thank you again for making Locked On Bucks your first listener view every day. Every day, just make sure you are coming back tomorrow. We will give the update on the Tristan Wirfs situation, among other things. But in the meantime, if you want to hear the latest news from around all of sports, you got the Olympics going on, you got the WNBA, the MLB, and of course, NFL training camps in full swing. But you want to hear more than just the national narratives and you want the biggest stories without the screaming, make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without the fake manufactured screaming Locked On Sports Today is streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. A big day for the Bucks starting outside corners on Sunday. Jamel Dean and Zion McCollum made some splash plays in practice on Sunday, each coming away with an interception, and McCollum's came as he tipped the ball to himself on a third down play during 11 on 11s. Todd Bowles even joked when he spoke with the media saying that Jamel Dean might get drug tested after practice since he usually doesn't make those catches, but both players certainly rose to the occasion on Sunday. Bulls went on to say that both players have been concentrating more on understanding where their help is and, quote, they came back in good shape and they're kind of talking to each other after every play about what they see and the communication has been good, end quote. McCollum has certainly worked hard to get to this point and has focused on being even better this season now that he's landed that starting outside corner role. He actually has his sights set on something that a Buccaneers corner hasn't done since Aqib Tlaib all the way back in 2010, and that's getting six interceptions. McCollum told the media, quote, I'm trying to be a big-time player. I want to make my name heard all across the league. I want to put my hands on balls. I've been telling my wife all offseason that I'm trying to get six interceptions, and I just keep repeating that over and over and over again. If I don't get it, I will be disappointed because that's what I've been working on over and over and over again. I'm not going to sell myself short. I'm shooting for the stars, end quote. Only three players in the NFL had that many interceptions last season, and the Buccaneers leader in interceptions was, of course, Antoine Hemfield Jr., who had three. Now, McCollum dropped three or four throughout the year, so to set the goal of six this season when you have zero in your first two seasons combined, that's pretty lofty, but I like it. It means that, number one, he knows that he can be better than what he's shown thus far in his career. This, this job wasn't just handed to him. He went out and he earned it with his play last year, filling in for Jamel Dean, filling in for Zion McCollum, but he also knows that he can be even better. Number two, his work ethic to accomplish that feat is going to pay off. McCollum has worked nonstop over the offseason to prepare himself for this role, and he's going to make it a point to show that that opportunity isn't being taken for granted. Sarah Walsh of NFL Network, who has covered Buccaneers training camp for the last couple of years, talked about it last week when she was on NFL Network reporting from you know Tampa, and, and she said, quote, he was a fifth round pick and he's entering his third season and Todd Bowles has called him a freak athlete. You see him there with his wife, Acadia, uh, Acacia, and I spoke with both of them, both college athletes at Sam Houston State. She was a soccer player and you know what she did this offseason? She learned how to operate the jugs machine they bought. 
He has been out there every day. And I said to her, you just put this thing in the car. And she said, oh yeah, you break it down, set it up. And we've been going to local fields around the area. That is what the McCollums have been doing, taking their generator and jugs machine to local fields so that he can get his work in. Sarah also went on to talk about asking him of his goal of six interceptions. And he told her that everybody you know, in the building absolutely loves it and that they're speaking it into existence. Kind of reminds me of another player in the secondary that spoke some things into existence and it all came to fruition last year, leading him to be the highest paid defensive back in the National Football League. I'm not sure that there has been a story that I have loved more than hearing that Zion and his wife not only bought a jugs machine, but that they're going around to fields and she's running the thing while he works in on his ability to bring in those interceptions. We we knocked him for it last year. You guys, long time every day, or for those of you returning from last year, you remember David Harrison's bold prediction every single Friday was Zion McCollum finally gets his first career interception. And there were plenty of times that those balls hit him square in the hands, hit him right in the chest between the numbers, and he bobbled it and dropped it away. Now, I would have to go back and watch every single Bucks game to decipher you know, how many of those resulted in the other team still putting up points when they didn't get the takeaway, but he knew that was his biggest shortcoming. So to prepare for that, the dude bought his own jugs machine and his wife learned how to operate it. That is dedication to your craft. That is dedication to improving on your game and dedication to showing that you are worthy of this starting corner job in your third season as a day three pick in 2021. Zion McCollum is has done everything the Bucks could have asked of him and gone even beyond. This is dedication. This is work ethic. This is the drive that McCollum has and what makes him a potentially special player and, quite honestly, a huge X factor for the Bucks' defense this season. A secondary that brought in only nine interceptions out of the team's 14 total, and then you have two of those interceptions that got sent to Detroit in the offseason. If Zion even gets to half of his goal, it's going to be a big boost for the defense, and it gives the offense that many more opportunities to do damage by stealing possessions away from their opponents. And when you talk about going up against the Eagles, against the Chiefs, against the 49ers, against the Dallas Cowboys, against some of these heavy, heavy hitters, if you can steal a possession away and then your offense can capitalize on it, that could be the difference between 11 and five and seven and, and 10. We're talking a massive, massive swing if you can create those opportunities on the defensive side of the ball and then capitalize with Liam Cohen's offense off of those turnovers. A warning from the defensive line that is coming up next on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. Time is an authorized ticket marketplace in Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. You want to catch an upcoming Rays game? Tickets when they host the Marlins start at $19. Then against the Orioles, they start at $16. And against the Astros, you can get tickets as low as $15. Right now, you can also get Buccaneers regular season tickets as low as $48. And Week one against the Commanders, they started just $79. And all of these prices feature game times all in pricing. So there aren't going to be any surprises when you get to checkout. You can wait until the last minute when prices drop by as much as 60%, or you can buy now knowing that you have game time's lowest price guarantee. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB or NFL tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, 
create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Wrapping things up here on the Locked On Bucks podcast and Kalijah Kansi put it out into the world and Bucks fans should certainly take notice. After practice on Sunday, Kalaja Kansi took some time with the media and he knows what needs to be done. The defense, more specifically the pass rush, was not good last year. This year, they are still without Randy Gregory, who at this point just needs to be cut from the team. Cut him, move on, get out from the distraction, let him deal with his own stuff on his own. But Kalaja Kansi knows that it starts up front, and that front is going to rely heavily on he and Vita Vea. Kansi told the media, quote, there is no ceiling for the two of us, end quote. Kansi also talked about his own personal goals, saying, quote, I definitely want to be an all-pro pro bowler. I want to get double-digit sacks this year, and I want to contribute to the team, end quote. Just like Zion McCollum, speak it into existence, young man. Speak it into existence. Defensive line coach Casey Rogers called the Vea Cancy duo a quote, very interesting combination, but herein lies the issue. Can those two do enough to allow others to get to the quarterback? I realize that Rogers called them a pressure defense. And by them, I mean the Bucks defense as a whole. He called them a pressure defense, but pressure, while good, doesn't always result in positive plays for the defense. Yeah, pressure can create takeaways. Pressure can create, you know, throwaways, can can create, uh, you know, mistimed or misplaced passes. But against mobile quarterbacks that the Bucs are going to face this year, like Mahomes, Hurts, Purdy, Daniels, Young, you have to be able to close in and finish the play. Pressure could affect a pass play but it could also lead to gashing gains on the ground by some of these quarterbacks. You know what's always a positive play for a defense? A sack. There's tons of pressure right now on Kansi and Vea to make that happen. And trust me, I will be elated if Kansi reaches double-digit sacks. If you told me right now that by January, we were talking about Kalijah Kansi having t- double-digit sacks and Zion McCollum having six interceptions. I would bet on the Bucs being in, at the minimum, the NFC Championship game. The problem is they, they are going to run into offenses that when they realize, or if they realize, that Kansi and Vea are the only two viable threats those offensive coordinators are going to game plan to eliminate those two and force the Yaya's and the Tryon Shrienkas and the Logan Halls and the Chris Braswells to beat them. And while I'm I'm high on Yaya Diaby and his ceiling, he's still largely unproven. I don't know if if those edge rushers, those other front seven pieces outside of Kansi and Vea can get the job done the way it has to get done in order for the Bucs to be a legitimate contender. Yes, I believe that that Cancy and Diaby are going to be really good, really solid players. I think Chris Braswell can be a really solid player. I think there's, there's still a little untapped potential in Tryon Shoyinka if he can put it together. Because we've seen the flashes, it's just about putting it together consistently. I've I've said it time and time again, the Bucs are really high on the abilities of Marquise Watts and Jose Ramirez. So you put all of that together and maybe this pass rush is far better than we believe it is at this moment in time in July in 2024. That doesn't mean that it also isn't possible for Kansi and Diaby and these other guys that I named to struggle or have a setback. We've talked about it on this show for months that the edge rusher and getting after the quarterback was the biggest need on this football team. You could argue interior offensive line. You can just as easily argue that it was getting after the quarterback. Leading up to the draft, I focused a lot 
on defensive players that could get after the quarterback. Chop Robinson, Jared Verse, Leatu Latu, Dallas Turner. I did that for a reason. And it was because we all knew that the position group was thin and shallow and that there weren't any legitimately proven studs coming off the edge. Now, a big portion of the responsibilities of collapsing the pocket, shedding blockers, creating pass rush lanes, fall on the shoulders of Kalijah Kansi and Vita Vea to wreak havoc and create those lanes, create those opportunities for the players behind them. It could work wonderfully, or it could be completely stonewalled and cause all kinds of problems for the defense. It could leave the secondary out on islands against wide receivers, which for an extended period of time, I don't care how good your corners are. I don't care how good your safeties are. If those guys are one-on-one -on -one for six, seven, eight seconds, someone's going to get open and, and the defense is going to give up ex explosive plays. You know, the, the problem also lies in the fact that we won't really know which way it's going to lean until the season gets underway. We don't know if the edge rush rotation and Kalijah Kansi and Vita Vea are going to be able to create the opportunities that the Bucks defense needs to succeed until they're already taking on other teams. And then if it doesn't work, it's on Todd Bowles to get creative with where he's bringing pressure from. He's going to have to send extra guys more often and, and send, you know, two blitzers, three blitzers out of the secondary from, you know, the middle of the defense with Levante or Servasier Dennis or KJ Britt. And Todd Bowles is going to have to troubleshoot this thing in real time in order to give the Bucs a chance to win in that early stretch of the schedule. You, you're not going to make the playoffs if you're the Buccaneers before the bye week, but you can absolutely miss the playoffs before the bye week. It's going to be a very difficult balancing act for this Buccaneers defense if that edge rush does not get going and if Kalijah Kansi and Vita Vea are basically removed from the equation before they can ever really get off the ground. I do have to say, though, I loved seeing Gerald McCoy out at practice on Sunday working with Kalijah Kansi and some of his moves that he can use on the offensive line. Kansi is small. He's strong. He's incredibly quick. But working on some of those pass rush moves to refine his skills and kind of add a little bit more to his arsenal, you absolutely love to see it. Say what you will about Gerald McCoy. You know, he was, I thought he was great for the hand that he was dealt, seeing him out there working with the team, really kind of the same way that early in his career, Warren Sapp was out there working with him. It could only make Kalisha Kansi better in the long term. That's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Bucks. Please make sure you are coming back tomorrow. You can do so. Subscribe on YouTube, turn on those notifications, or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Check out everything going on over at BucksNation.com. Follow on Twitter at Locked On Bucks at JRCO underscore Bucks. Become a Locked On Bucks insider by going to join subtext.com slash Locked On Bucks or click the link in the show notes. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire the cannons. I want to thank you so much for joining me right here on Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'll <laughs>